The Academic Staff Union of Universities have blamed the shortage of lecturers on the surge in the exit of lecturers out of Nigeria and the concerns around the integrated personal and payroll information system. ASU at the Usumanu Danfodio University, Sokoto, said about 100 lecturers had left the university, while the union at the Federal University, Gusau Zanfara, disclosed that the institution was in need of about 1,000 lecturers to fill the vacancies created by those who had left. The union at the Federal University of Agriculture, Abel Okuta, Ogun State, said over 350 academic vacancies were available at the institutions, while 27 lecturers had left two faculties at the University of Lagos, as 100 workers at the University of Uyo traveled out of the country. And joining me on the news to talk about these is Oludari Akin Laja, a management consultant with expertise in learning and development and international development. Thank you, Mr. Oludari. Glad to have you join me. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's great to be here. All right. What would you say is responsible for the current problem of lecturer shortage in Nigerian universities? Okay. So, uh, yes. So, the uh, ASU has uh, said is um, for, for the JAPA syndrome, that that's true. Um, if you if you have an uh, an academic environment that um, the lecturers are not seeing growth, they can't do research, they can't um, um, handle proper learning experiences, they cannot um, impact the students. The environmental condition is not is not comfortable enough. Uh, there are no social amenities to to give them some sort of cushion effect and all that. Certainly, you will have lecturers moving their jobs, uh, and these guys are in need globally. Okay, uh, and so you will have that happen. Uh, but, but but I'm a bit not comfortable with the uh, payroll system being a reason. Um, that 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 also should be looked at. Um, we need that payroll system. So why would that be a reason uh, for them leaving? But but, but I'm, I'm I'm very sure. And if you if you notice, it's not just academia that is dealing with the Japa syndrome. All right, every industry seems to be dealing uh, with human capital movement away away from the country and 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 that's 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 certainly a major major issue uh, for 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 the universities okay let's take a look at the conditions for lecturers across universities you know in Nigeria how do you feel these has impacted their leaving the country it will it will remuneration wise um, um if you are if you are in well developed economies for instance you could you could get a you could get a loan or a mortgage sort of to buy a house or to own a house you could do that to get a car uh, your children probably would have subsidized fees to attend schools and the rest okay so uh, these lecturers are not um are not um alienated from the pressures of the environment and how much is the remuneration and yet you ask them to impart knowledge, to share knowledge. Most of them have held on for this long because they love what they do. They love teaching, they love imparting knowledge. But if we don't have a social system where people uh, can, can, uh, can have uh, the basic amenities of life, uh, how will they be able to survive? Secondly, how much of research is done in our universities? How, how, how is the proficiency level of these lecturers improved? Are they able to 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 be, become uh, major contributors to society? Okay, that's what academia should be. The academic institutions should be providing solutions for society, providing solutions, uh, uh, providing policy directions for government because they are research driven. But if you don't have an environment where these universities lecturers can express themselves, where they can hold research, where they can do things like that, of course <laughs> they will look for the next uh, available plane. Of mm. flight to take them to environments that would uh, give them free research, free research money. In Kodams, they have uh, they have available resources for research. They have ability to grow their career. They can uh, exchange knowledge with people, meet people, travel around the world, and live their best life. Really. Mm. <laughs> now, talking about the government, the government themselves and the ASU yeah. ASU Union. Uh, in recent times have been in the eyes of the storm in terms of the ASO demanding for payment of salaries for their lecturers. And, you know, this has led to yeah. prolonged strikes like we have seen in Nigeria, uh, in our universities across Nigeria. What, yeah. uh, you know, approach should the government take in preventing such a recurrence? And do you feel these impact on the welfare of lecturers and even their motivation to remain lecturers in Nigeria? Yes, it would. Um, um, 
based on what I do, I, I, I think in terms of design, it's about the design, our, our educational system, how it is designed, uh, the recruitment policy of, our, of, of the universities, how the universities receive funds, how they expend funds. The whole design has to be adjusted or we'll keep having the same problems, okay? The university is waiting for government to, to release money for it to run its systems. Uh, if, if that's the case, government will still keep holding you to ransom. But at the same time, if we are saying the schools should be independent, okay, which is what the educational consultants or learning consultants have said will be a good idea. But on the other hand, you are then saying, can students pay the fees required for universities to run independently? So you see, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an end-to-end -end challenge that we must really design our way out of. We really cannot say, oh, uh, this person is wrong or that person is wrong. Now, why we hold the government responsible is that we are saying to them, can't you put more funds into education? Can't you contribute more money? Can't education get more budget? Okay. Now, now, if that is the case, if government then says, okay, let's give you more budget, we have another level of problem. How do we disburse money? What determines what you can get? What determines what who can get? I just heard recently that they have added more people are trying to pitch more federal universities for to be added, to be open. You know, so the, the design is challenging. How, how do you manage that end to end? So ASU is pulling the government on this side. The government is saying, oh, oh ASU, you are irresponsible. And these are two different entities taking advantage of a flawed design. And until we tweak that design, it, everybody just keeps pointing fingers. And who suffers is at the end, the students, and of course the lecturers who are in those environments, who obviously want to contribute to share knowledge, but are hampered by a system that is designed in the way it is currently designed. Mm. Oludari, I mean, the ASU has the cult, they have the culture of always suspending class activities following one strike. Mm -hmm. Or the other, I don't think these yeah. strikes have proved to be effective, you know, so far so good. Do you feel calling strikes and cutting short class activities in universities is the best approach? Well, you, you can't tell the union how, how, they want to, how they want to get the attention of the government. Uh, even in the UK, health workers went on strike, okay? So uh, the best way union thinks it can engage government is to go on strikes. It's a, it's a global phenomenon. So, all right, so what we're saying in Nigeria as, a, Nigeria as a context, really the children are the ones that are hurt. And the truth is most lecturers have their children in these universities, okay? So I'm not sure the lecturers will just really like that uh, pressure to be on the university where students keep going on strike, students don't finish on time. You know, that's not their, that's, that's not their, that's not what they would like. But the truth is, what other way can the union get the attention of the government other than going on strike? Is there another way they can get that done? If there's another way, then the strikes will not be an option. But currently, as you and I are speaking here, it seems to me like strikes are the only options. Now, the second question is, is it getting the attention of the government? Maybe it is, maybe it is not. But I think that based off strikes, certain commitments have been made from the government. Whether those commitments have been carried out or not, that's another level of conversation. But the strikes have produced certain conversations to start to happen. The strikes are making the government consider the structure of our educational system. Because the truth is, the way we are currently structured, we cannot get the best out of our education system. But to redesign and to reconstruct what we're talking about, both parties must start to make concessions. The question now is who will make the first concession, meaning who will build the cart? Obviously, we will always think it's the government because the government has the power of policy, the government has the power of funding, the government has the power to drive the nation in the direction where it wants it to go. That's why we all are saying to the government, it is time to redesign this thing and find a way where the universities can be autonomous, can be productive, and can give the best curriculum for our students. All right, thank you so much for your time. On the news, Oludari Akin Laja. Management consultant with expertise, learning and development. Thank you. Thank you for her. Thank you.